To travel almost as fast as the speed of light is one of the dreams of mankind. The fascination and mind game of extreme speed is something that keeps many scientists busy. There's a group of ETH students who spend all their time in constructing a super-fast capsule which runs in a vacuum tube. They call themselves Swiss Loop. In the course of this story, they will be in a competition with other international student teams in Los Angeles. Three teams make it into the finals. So they are up and down. We had like a big accident in a vacuum chamber. Students want to revolutionize the transport of goods, and at the same time they learn how to work together in teams to find new solutions for public transportation. The rector of ETH, Sarah Springman, sees her part in this project. Hopefully as a cheerleader and supporter from the top of the university, they got the message that they had the full support of the executive board of ETH Zurich and, of course, of myself. This is the first story of the new podcast by ETH Zurich. The first four episodes will focus on entrepreneurship at ETH on all levels, from student projects to successful spin-offs. I am Jennifer Kakshuri. Chapter 1. Getting ready. We are at Innovation Park Zurich, in a former hangar of a small airport. Many people are standing around a four-wheel vehicle. It's three and a half meters long and drives with 540 horsepower. So it's extremely fast. We are looking into the inside of the new pod made by the Swiss Loop team of ETH Zurich. It is the first time the pod is revealed to the public. Dear friends and family, dear guests, 20 students have for 10 months worked over a thousand hours for us to be here today. Cassandra is a member of the team of the student group. She is in charge of communications. When I joined this project, I had an image in my head of pods that with the speed of sound would travel through vacuum tubes. A big world that suddenly would be smaller, would come together. I had a dream in my head. The reason why Cassandra had an image in her head is because of one person in particular, Elon Musk. If you don't remember, he's the founder of Tesla. In 2013, he presented his Hyperloop vision and at the same time talked to us students directly and motivated us to be a part of this development. The goal of the Hyperloop competition is top speed. Speed is interesting. My name is Luca Di Tizio. Um, I was born in 1993. Luca Di Tizio is sitting in one of the Swiss Loop offices, only a few meters away from the main building of the ETH Zurich, in a very old building. We were given two of these offices, which are about, I'd say, four meters high and, and beautiful windows and, and very shiny, sometimes hot in summer when, it, when, when the light shines through. Luca earned his bachelor's degree at ETH in mechanical engineering, and he's pursuing his master's degree now. During the past two years, he didn't spend all his time studying. He participated in the first competition with Swiss Loop, and now he is a board member and an advisor for the current team. My motivation, of course, in the beginning, it was a blank canvas. So you had white paper, you could just start doing something. It was initiated by students, it was from students for students. And um, I think that really, really, I like that idea because the startup world nowadays is, is very much like that. So you don't, you don't adhere to too many rules. Um, makes it a bit harder maybe because everything's very open. But that was my main motivation, to, to really influence a project from A to Z and, and be part of it and, um, and work on something that I think might change the world in the future. So I think for me, this is a great contextualized learning where people do it because they want to do it, not because they get any credits, and where they put into practice 
what they've learned and with enthusiasm and they go over and beyond and they push out their yield locuses of their previous experience and learn as they're doing. Well, the vision and, and the coolest part of it is definitely people transportation. I mean, there is, uh, speaking of the Hyperloop, the unique selling point is speed. So you have the possibility to travel in an energy efficient way at speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers an hour. And that just creates a whole new world. You can live in countries that you don't work in. Your commute is going to be completely different. It's going to change the way we transport cargo. Um, and that's really motivating, you know, being part of, of a, it's, it's a movement since 2015. It's not yet a reality. But it's getting somewhere and being part of that um, is extremely fascinating. We have batteries that supply more than 700 volts and that's pretty damn much for going through cables. So everything that is connected to safety in regard in electronics um, is, is going to be tricky. And uh, we, have, we have done a lot of testing here, so that's good. We've been able to, to seal our vacuum boxes in a way that is, that is sensible. Um, so, but anything that has to do with, with burning up those batteries is going to be tricky. The man who is responsible for the batteries is Hanno, a tall muscular student with a boyish face. He's working in a separate building in the suburbs of Zurich, where the team built the pod together and also the dangerous batteries. I'm somehow responsible that all the electronic stuff works nicely together and also the communication to the inverters which then um, power the motors. Listen up. We will hear from the inverters again later. What Hanno doesn't know yet, the inverters will play a crucial part later in this story. So there's a lot of um, electronics involved in this year's project and my um, system as a whole is mandatory to have the whole pot to work. So there, there are some problems you can work around, but if a major part fails in our system or my system especially, then um, the whole pot will not work properly. And this is very, somehow very stressful for me, but I know the risk and I, I'm very confident that it works in the end. The end means the Hyperloop competition in Los Angeles what the whole Swiss Loop team worked so hard for. How does Luca feel? What are his emotions as a board member and troubleshooter regarding the competition? Definitely anxiety somewhere because uh, you've worked with a lot of support from a lot of people for a long time. Um, and seeing that really winning or, or being good at the competition is, is your goal and that's what you want to achieve. So my main emotion is going to be a positive one. Um, it's going to be definitely a, a feeling of achievement because we've made it until there and that's that's a, a, a big win already. Um, but when we're there, we just put our heads down, nose to the grindstone, stay focused and execute our steps the way we've planned them. Once the team is in LA at the headquarters of Elon Musk's SpaceX and the Boring Company, they first have to show that the pod is safe. There are tests, for example, which are quite trivial. Does the machine fall apart? Can you shake on it a bit? Does it work? Does it drive? Then there are more sophisticated tests related to the vacuum and the electronics. The three teams with the best test results make it into the finals and get a two-hour time slot in the vacuum tube. Most of the teams have not been inside the tube with their current prototype. So you get one run and... Um, Looking at top speed, in the end, uh, the winner is, uh, is chosen. In the first year, Swiss Loop got into the final and placed third. Being in the final again, just as last year, is our goal. Chapter 2. Competing. Let's listen in to their final countdown. Five.
Los Angeles in July. Will the dream of the Swiss Loop team come true? The tests for the ETA pod are very successful. We were the first team to get into the Hyperloop tube. For a test ride, and then... I didn't hear from the team again. Neither did Sarah Springman, the rector of ETH Zurich. They have a bit of a habit of disappearing into some black hole for a while. Especially when things aren't going so well. It wasn't until Saturday, the last day before the final, when I got a voice message from Cassandra, the communications manager. Hey everybody, sorry for not getting back to you earlier. Um, this week was quite crazy. We are in the point in the competition where we don't know if we can proceed. We had like a big accident in a vacuum chamber. We had some problems um, caused by the inverters and we basically shortened um, one battery. Hey, remember the inverters? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, of course, uh, a drastic turn of events that we had on that day. Very frustrating because... The problem itself was a short circuit inside the inverter. So the inverter was a bought part. And um, because of a manufacturing fault inside a bought part, our part was not able to um, work anymore. Sadness. We knew that the cells are damaged and cannot be used anymore. Our journey was, was done there. Um, the batteries were the only power supply that we had. Um, they were worth in excess of 20,000 um, bucks, excluding all of the work that went into designing them and into manufacturing them. The pod was out of the competition. The Swiss Loop team could only watch the final from a platform like the rest of the audience. And the students from Zurich had to see their Swiss competitors from Lausanne getting in on third position. The team from Delft in the Netherlands came in second and the odds-on favorite from Munich, Germany, came in first again, like last time. Chapter 3, Winning in Losing. They put everything back together. They prepared the pod for the shipping. They communicated what the issue was, um, wrote the statements, did the interviews and so on. And um, they told everyone on the team what went wrong and why. Um, of course, some people, especially the people who were not there for engineering, didn't quite catch on to that because it's, you know, uh, failure is always an option. For me, what's important is not so much the end result, but the fact that they tried and that they will have learned something because they didn't succeed. There are a lot of issues um, that the vacuum and that this very high speed and high acceleration bring with it um, that just make failure a daily a daily challenge. On a much more general level, Sarah Springman believes that traveling with pods like the one Swiss Loop created could actually become reality sooner than we think. There is a lot of work that needs to be done, but I believe that the technical solution is actually not that far away, like many things we try and do in this world, but the social side and the security side and the political side and all of those other things that are more on the soft side of things are where the main problems will lie in the future. By the way, talking about the future and building speed pods, the not very successful competition in LA was a huge success for one of the Swiss Loop members. Do you remember Hanno, the person in charge of the batteries? He was approached by engineers of Elon Musk's boring company. And then they said before we had the, the damage that they would like to interview me for a job offer. And then all the uh, bad stuff happened and we tried to uh, do that first. And afterwards I asked if they still were interested in doing an interview. I was unsure, but they weren't. So they said that they were very impressed also by how I handled all the stuff with the damage itself. 
they were even more impressed after the damage than they were <laughs> before. So <laughs> that was kind of good, I guess. And as far as I know, they sent out four job offers in total for the competition. So four out of maybe 300 people got a job offer and I was uh, blessed to be one of them. So I somehow saw that I cannot really uh, decline the offer. Okay, we get it. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. But what about his girlfriend in Zurich? Yeah, that's um, an issue. But still, she said she would support me either way. That, of course, means that I would um, have to move out and move to L.A., but she understands my decision. But still, it's, uh, it was tough. As soon as he gets his visa, Hanno, with his bachelor's degree from ETH Zurich, will work full-time as one of three electronic engineers at the Boring Company in L.A. Since that's a full job and I won't have any time left, I will do my master's. Not yet. It's a very open contract, but uh, still. I don't know, maybe if it's not good working there, you don't know. I guess it will, but uh, still. If there are some issues, I would come back and um, start my master's. Twenty students team up to spend all their time over months on constructing a high-speed pod. Their goal? Being a finalist in the international Hyperloop competition organized by Elon Musk. Their vision? High-speed transportation of goods and people in vacuum tubes. They hoped for success, but they failed. But that's part of life as a scientist. I can promise you that even though I'm the rector here, I didn't win everything in my life. And what's more, sometimes I go and talk to the students about the times that I didn't succeed and why, and the fact that actually one should just get on with it and do the next thing. This is the first episode of the new podcast by ETH Zurich, produced by Tis Wachter's Audio Story Lab and by me, Jennifer Kakshuri. Music, sound design and mastering by Luki Fretz.